Welcome back. Today we will be installing SQL Server, the Bid Suite, and the AdventureWorks database. Below outlines the steps of what we'll be doing. First, we're going to use Google to find SQL Server Management Studios. The reason why we will use Google is because the website on which the download is uh, exists might be different uh, based on when you're downloading it. So this is the most solid way to find it. Then we'll be downloading the business intelligence tools and installing it. And then we'll download the AdventureWork databases and restore them. We'll be using those databases to learn and experiment on. So open up your favorite browser and search engine. It doesn't have to be Google and type in SQL Server. Press enter. What we are going to be installing today is SQL Server 2017 Developer Edition. So scroll down on the links and find a link that says SQL Server Downloads. The page you'll be taken to may or may not look like this at the time of download based on whether Microsoft changes the layout or not. What you want to download is the Developer Edition. There are three different editions that Microsoft makes available. The free trial edition, which is basically its uh, enterprise edition or uh, edition of SQL Server that's capable of handling production demanding workloads. And then they have an express edition, which is a SQL Server edition that works with small servers, desktops, and webs. Uh, however, it is not full featured. And then we have the developer edition, which doesn't work well with production environments. However, it has full features for development and testing. And it's great that you could use it to work on, now you can use it to learn and learn about all SQL servers. In the past, you can uh, and learn about all SQL servers features. In the past, you cannot do this. So once that has been downloaded, you want to click on the download and it will open up. If you have this screen, do you want to allow app to make changes to your device? Click yes. And it'll get things ready. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually click on custom. And we will use the default folder. This is where it's going to download the real installation program to and we'll click install. So right now what's happening is that this program is downloading the files, the actual installation files that will contain SQL Server, which is about 1.5 gigs. What version of SQL Server you use doesn't really matter because in the newer versions of SQL Server, because the language and the actual database has said semi-consistent, they really usually only add-on features and the amount of features that are depreciated and replaced are minimal. Furthermore, you have the capability to make SQL Server run as an older version, but I'll get into that in later videos. For now, as this downloads, since 1.5 gigs is pretty big, I'm going to pause it and you can take a coffee break or whatever pause it yourself and we will get back very soon so I hope you enjoyed your break or if you didn't um, I hope you already had downloaded the actual installation file because that was quite some time it took to download at least on my connection once the actual SQL server installation has downloaded and installed which will do which it will do automatically you will see a pop-up that says SQL Server Installation Center what you want to do once this opens up is click on the installation link on the left side navbar from this list you want to click on new SQL Server standalone edition installation or add features to an existing installation. Click it and then 
this pop-up will appear which says please wait while Microsoft SQL Server blah 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 the first screen you'll get is the product key screen on the screen you can just click next because we downloaded the developer edition and we have full features so there's no reason why we'd need to enter a product key accept the license terms if you want you can read over it I'm not gonna go into that the global rules will be scanned it'll check the installation files in my case I have a firewall up which might cause problems but I don't care because it's not a critical warning this is just a warning so I can still click next and here you get to choose what out of SQL Server's robust capabilities you want to install SQL sat, SQL, the SQL Server database comes with a lot of extensions like uh, SQL Server replication and if you're curious about what it does it will uh, tell you in the feature description on the right it includes a set of technologies for copying and distributing database objects from one database to another and synchronizing data between databases for consistencies you can use replication to redistribute data to different locations and to remote and mobile users over local and wide area networks dial-up connections wireless connections and the internet so there will be cases in which you can use that capability but for our case we won't be getting into that now in case you didn't understand what that was I'll probably speak about it a little bit more later on I don't want to confuse you right now machine learning which is a huge field if you're going to learn about it I'm not going to get into that either so SQL Server also offers support for languages like R and Python and full text and semantic extractions for search this is basically a feature of SQL Server uh, which I'm not going to get into but it's for searching through key terms and uh, rows in a database table which I'll explain later data quality services which can be used for checking incoming data uh, for being accurate polybase query services for external data it allows you to query a different type of database which we'll discuss a little bit later analysis services for OLAPs we'll want that installed because I'll be talking about that a little bit later and that's about it if you're curious as to what anything else does you can go and read about it click on it read the feature description um, it also tells you the prerequisites for any of the installs and the amount of space that you'll need in order to install it so click next so a cool thing is that you can have multiple versions of SQL Server databases installed on your computer so you can have SQL Server 2012 and then you can create another database with a different installation for 2016 etc and as long as uh, they have different instance names they won't overlap so I'm gonna call this if you don't have SQL Server installed already you can just choose the default instance but in my case and I recommend you do this as well at least for this scenario let's give it a name we'll call it SQL server 2017 uh, learn L for learning okay the instance ID automatically changed and we will click next and it's going okay so here it's asking about configuration options at the moment this doesn't uh, really we don't really care about this this will be taken care of automatically and we should be good so just click next server configure database engine configurations 
you could use either Windows Authentication Mode or Mixed Mode, which uses SQL Server Authentication and Windows Authentication. Uh, I suggest you use Mixed Mode because it'll give you more uh, flexibility. Uh, you enter in a password you want to use. I'm not going to tell you the password I used. And we'll add the current user. So it's going. My computer is acting a bit slow right now. But it'll get there. I'm going to pause this. Actually, okay, it just came in. So I'm going to correct the password because I spelt it wrong. And then we'll click next. Once your user is added, it will have um, your current logged in user from the network. Click next. So now you will have the option for the analysis servers configuration to either run in tabular mode, multi-dimensional and data mining mode, or power pivot mode. We're going to add the current user again. I'm not going to get into what those mean at the moment. We'll discuss that later. Then click Next. OK, install. It's going to install. So we're going to let it install. And after it finishes installing, I'll get back to you and we'll finish up the installation of SQL Server. Till we get back, grab a coffee, grab a snack, and I'll see you soon. Hello again. We're back and it finished installing. And once it finished installing, the installer automatically closed. So what we need now is to install SQL Server management tools. So you click on the link and it'll take you to a website where you could download it and previous versions of the SQL Server install. It actually was packaged together, but now it's a separate install. So what you want to do is click on install and run it. So as it downloads, I'm going to pause again. I suggest you uh, grab a coffee again. You can never have too much coffee. And uh, once it's done, we will continue. OK, so after it's downloaded, and since we clicked Run that time, um, in Edge, if you didn't have that option, you could just run the file automatically that you just downloaded. We got this pop-up in Windows. It says User Account Control. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Click yeah. So now what's happening is that uh, we get the option to install Microsoft SQL Server Management Studios. So I'm going to click install. It's going to load the packages. We no longer need the SQL Server installation uh, window open because we've already installed that. And we will just wait for it to install. So for now, I'm going to pause it once again. You could do the same as your install uh, works. And I will get back to you soon. Once you have finished installing SQL Server Management Studios, chances are you're going to be asked to restart your computer with this screen if you're using the same version of SQL Server Management Studio. I say go for it. So what I'm going to do now is restart. So um, I'll see you in a moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to download uh, SQL Server's um, business intelligence tools. So in Google, open up your favorite Chrome browser and type in SQL Server Data Tools. Previously, SQL Server Data Tools was called the Business Intelligence Suite, and it was actually bundled with uh, with uh, the installation 
but now it comes separately. So what you will do now is download SQL Server Data Tools for Visual Studio 2017 or whatever version of Visual Studios you have installed. Previously it was standalone, but now not anymore. So you'll have to install Visual Studios. Community Edition should uh, work out. Um, once that is installed, I just clicked on the installation because I have Visual Studios uh, 2017 installed. If you want to know how to install Visual Studios 2017, just YouTube it. In YouTube, type Visual Studio 2017 installation and it'll walk you through one of the videos. So click on SSDT, click Next. Click install. You had to select from the drop down what Visual Studio's version you want it installed in. I'm going to select SQL Visual Studio 2017 and I want SQL Server Analysis Services installed, SQL Server Reporting Services installed, and SQL Server Integration Services installed. In the past, SQL Server Integration Services was called uh, uh, DTS or something uh, similar. So I'm going to click install and then do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? I'll click yes and it is going to install. So once the installation is finished, I will get back to you and you could let it install on your computer at the same time. For now, watch a show or for like five minutes or whatever you do for fun. So after around an hour, the installation finally finished and it's asking me to restart again. So as before with SQL Server Management Studio, I suggest you do. And once that's done, we will download the AdventureWorks database, get, and then delve into database theories. But for now, let's restart and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've, resta I've restarted my computer. And if you go to the start menu and type in SQL Server Management Studios, you should have a best match that shows the actual SQL Server Management Studios. So click on it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to um, get the Adventure Works database. We're going to download it. So in Google or whatever your favorite browser is, type in Adventure Works. What Adventure Works is, is Adventure Works database. What AdventureWorks is, is a learning database that Microsoft provides in order to master the actual AdventureWork, their database suites. So let's, uh, there are other ones like uh, Northwind or Whole Wide World, but we'll be working with AdventureWorks. So let's get it. So Microsoft SQL Server product samples, databases, downloads, Click on downloads and as you can see here we have adventure works 2014 full database backup so what we'll do is we'll download that and we will wait till it is done so I'll get back to you once it is done and so we've made a lot of progress we've installed so far SQL Server, we've installed Management Studios, which is a browser for SQL Server, which allows us to view the actual data in the database and its structure. And then we installed related tools, SSIS, SSRS, SSAS. And then we downloaded the AdventureWorks Learning Database. And I have opened it up in Google Chrome, so I'm going to go to AdventureWorks. I, I'm going to right click on it, extract all, and I'm going to extract it. I've already extracted it, so what I'm going to do now is open it up, and there is my backup file. You'll notice in many cases that, that SQL Server backups, 
end with dot bak however it doesn't necessarily end with bak that extension um, is something you should put in but you don't have to put it in so now let's go to our start menu in windows and click sql server management and our best match is SQL Server Management Studios, just what we were looking for. Click on it, and it will pop up. So what we're going to do now, and we'll also revisit this later, is restore a backup. What I'm doing right now is actually restoring it for in case I'm going to revisit this um, and perform simple queries on it we will be recovering backups later on because it's a little bit more uh, complicated than just the simple restore. There's more to it. So what I am doing now is, um, since my SQL Server Management uh, Studios uh, has opened up, it says connect to server. The instance of the database I created was SQL Server 2017L. If you used a default instance, all you have to do, all you have to put in in this box is a dot. At the moment, I'm going to connect with my Windows authentication because I know it has access to it. Um, however, you can create other usernames and connect to it. There are two types of authentication, which I'll get into later. Uh, two main types, but there are also others. Um, but for now, let's just connect to the database, restore it. So connect, I'm not gonna get into the details at the moment, just follow along. I'm gonna right click on databases, click restore uh, database from the new pop-up menu. We'll go to devices, click on the device radio button, click the triple dots on the button next to it, click add, go to wherever you have stored your database. In my case, it is um, your database backup. In my case, it is here. Like oddly enough, I don't have permissions to actually see the download folder from uh, here. So let's see if I can move it out. So I will. So that's a permissions thing and I won't get into that, um, but I'm gonna just cut, uh, cut it and paste it in my root folder. Continue. Okay, so I've pasted it here. What I'm going to do next is go to C drive and there is my AdventureWorks database. I click it, click OK, click OK, and then click OK. What's happening now is that the actual database is restoring. We restored it and we'll click on SQL Server Management Studios, extend and boom, there's our database and we could view everything that's in it like the tables which i'll explain what they are later and much much more so now we have done a lot and i hope you've learned a lot uh, however we will be recovering this uh later for now i'm going to move on to our next subject which is the database fundamentals and we'll uh get your foundation firm so going forward you will hopefully learn a lot and become a super database uh master